So in the previous video, uh, we modeled uh, the, the assets here. Uh, so the next stage is to prep the scene ready to start texturing. So uh, we're going to select uh, our objects. No, for, sorry, first thing I'm going to do is resave the scene. So I'm going to go File, Save Scene As. And we want to keep our models, and we want to keep our, a, a file with the models with all of the um, object's history still in. So if we have any issues further down the production, we can always get back to it. Okay, so we're going to file, save as. And we're just going to change this from Lamp Tutorial S1 to S2. Okay. So the reason for this is we want to delete all of the information attached to these and we just want them as standalone objects uh, without any of the history and things that could complicate or cause it to crash or things that are adding unnecessary data to the file that we just don't need. So I'm going to go to um, modify first and freeze transformations and what that's going to do is reset all of this value, all these values to kind of zero and it means the object's heart or resting place is going to be uh, where they are currently. So modify, freeze transformations. Okay, um, that has worked in that case. And let's just check some of these, not so much. Let's just select those, modify, freeze transformations. Okay, because it's instanced, we can't do it. So let's just click on this first one and see if we can do it from here. Modify, freeze transformations. We're going to do this one. No. Okay, it's not a problem. We can leave those as they are. Um, the next thing we're going to do, or uh, the other objects are done. So we're going to select them and we're going to go to Edit, Delete by Type, and History. Okay. So in our outliner, which you can get to by going to this bullet pointed list, if you don't see this list, you can go to Windows. Um, we can go to, uh, I can't even remember which one it was now, uh, UI Elements. No, it's going to be one of these, outliner, outliner, there you go, sorry. There you go, outliner, uh, just midway down, and then it will bring it up. So we've got our lamp, we've got our lamp cages with the top and point, we have the ring, and we have the post. Okay, so, textures. The first thing we're going to do is go to what's called the hypershade. So we can go to Windows, and we can go into um, rendering editors, and we can go to hypershade. And you'll see this little icon down here. Um, we can also go to it here. Um, you can also add it to your shelf if you wish. Um, but as the icon's on display, we're just going to click there. I'm going to quickly talk through um, the, the really primitive textures that are associated with Maya and sort of go from there. So a shader is the software that basically applies a texture. Uh, so we've got Arnold is kind of the go-to um, tool at the moment. Um, but really, um, it's, a, it's a bit advanced, and really, if we if we dive right into this, you kind of lose the understanding that underpins how this works. So whilst yes, Arnold will get us really, really nice results, um, it means that we actually overlook and skip some of the understanding, um, which will allow you to create things nice and quickly. Um, so. If we were working in hyperrealism and we're doing some architectural visualization, we'd probably dive straight into this. Um, but we're working on cartoons and we have that flexibility to be a bit more creative. And so we're going to start with those foundation um, textures and kind of processes for shading. So if we just go into the Maya surfaces, okay, and what we want is um, this Maya, okay, and you'll see this. Um, small collection of, of shaders and this is exactly what we want. So Lambert basically means anything that um, doesn't really reflect with a shiny point. So you'll notice um, that by default up here in the materials edit, in the materials um, stack we have a Lambert material. Okay, That Lambert material is the default shader that gets applied to every new object that gets created. So notice how all these are grey. So if I, um, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller just so we can kind of see the wind, the view and this. Um, it's really a bit, it's a bit awkward really. So if I change the colour of this shader, it's going to change it in here as well. Okay. So um, let's take that back. So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a shader for this here, a shader for the link. 
and a shader for the body here. Okay, so we need to think about those surfaces. So the first thing is that um, this wood here, I'm going to treat as being like an unglossed kind of unvarnished wood. So I'm going to imagine that it's been a bit weathered, it's been a bit battered, and so really it's not going to have the shine that you can kind of see from a blind. It's really just going to have that kind of diffused surface of a lamp. Look. So I'm going to call this uh, lamp post T X T R. Okay, it's important that you name the textures um, because if you try and name an object, the same thing as you name a texture, they will conflict and um, it won't allow you to do it. So by putting TXT out at the end, we know that whenever this word, this object appears in a stack anywhere, we know it's the texture of the lamppost and not the lamppost itself. So within that, we have the settings, which you can kind of see down here. So we're going to go with the color and I'm just going to basically pick a kind of like a brown surface. Something kind of like, uh, kind of like there maybe, something like that. It's a little bit too, yes, that'll do. Okay, and then to assign it to the object, I'm going to select the object. Hold down the right mouse button over this here and go up to 12 o'clock where it says assign material to selection. Okay, and now you can see we have that shade that shader assigned okay and you can't see it really reflecting or kind of doing any um massive shine which is fine so a blin and a fungi so if you imagine like um the surface and the desk in front of you you will probably find that you have um a bit of light reflecting like a spotlight reflecting but without it actually being super shiny that it's reflecting into your eyes that is what the blin and the fungi do i think the, the blin is slightly brighter um and the fungi is has a bit more of a diffused surface so by diffuse it's a bit more grayish and a bit more matted a bit more textured um, and then the fung um, on its own is super shiny, um, if you imagine like a new piece of metal or plastic. So that is the one that we're, I'm going to go with next. So I'm going to click on the fung, and it does they do kind of get in the way of each other, so I'm just going to bring that down. Oh, there we go. And I'm just going to click on this word here and just change this to lamp cage DXTR. So rather than writing texture out, I'm just abbreviating it in a way that makes sense. I'm going to select those objects and I'm going to assign that um, to them and you'll see it's slightly changed but as there's no light in the scene um, oh there we go for default the default light if we go forward look you can kind of see that shine happening there and you can see much more than what you can see the change happening on the post okay especially on the back there we've got really high contrast forming okay so I'm going to change that to black by clicking on color. And if we go to black, uh, okay. I'm not sure why it didn't change in the viewport. Let's try again. Um, let's go. Okay, I think I've assigned it to that, but not the other thing. <laughs> but not the lamp. Let's click on the lamp and assign it to that. There we go. Now it's appearing. Okay. Um, I don't want that to be black, so I'm actually going to create a new one for this. Um, I'm going to change this to, um, I'm going to imagine it's a bit more of like a, not new, but it's a bit of an old chain link. So um, it's a bit more matted. Not much care has gone into this one as opposed to the actual um, lamp down here. As you can see, if I just show you, you can see that shine kind of happening there quite nicely. I'm just going to rename this as um, Lamp cage ring T X T R and this time um, we're just going to go for kind of like a, a darker grey, still matted, maybe a little bit of dark orangey kind of stuff coming through as well. Um, we'll just kind of see what it looks like. So we'll just um, right. So let's just go back into color. It doesn't appear to have change there we go and there we go now we just have a subtle some subtle variation there as you see in the colors that are within this within these objects okay finally we have 
um, these faces down here. So we've obviously cut it this in. We want this to be a concrete post. And the issue we've got is the concrete post is actually attached to the same object. So to solve this, we can actually assign the texture to the faces. So if I hold down the right mouse button and go to face, I'm going to click and drag and select all of those. And then holding shift, I'm going to select the first one in the loop, the second one in the loop, and double click. And that means now we've selected all of those around. And I'm just going to double check to make sure I've not selected, accidentally selected anything else. And I'm going to go back to the hyper shade. And this time, I'm going to um, create a uh, blin. And this time, I'm just going to call this concrete um, post texture. Um, I've, it's deselected because of the auto save, so I'll have to get that back in a second. Um, I do recommend you have auto save on, by the way. Um, right, I've, and I've accidentally um, <laughs> attached this window to my interface, um, so I'm just going to try and pull that back out. There we go. Um, I'm just trying to get it set up so we can see both, but it's really irritating because I can't. Um, there's always a compromise somewhere. Right, so we'll roll with this. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go back and select these faces again. I've got a bit of lag happening. I think it's because I've got dual monitors going and um, it's a bit of an old PC laptop and I've got several programs going as well as filming this. I think the video card's a bit pushed. So um, with these selected, I'm going to go into the concrete post texture blend. Hold down the right mouse button, go assign materials to selection, and we now have that material showing. Okay, so that is a kind of basic way to, to add textures to a scene and get a different kind of reflection happening from each surface. Um, if I click on the render view, I'll just see if anything comes out. Oh, we don't want the Arnold renderer. <laughs> so just give, just bear with me a moment while this now processes. Because we haven't got any Arnold textures assigned, it's not going to show. So if we just go to Maya Software, render, we don't have any lights, so it might not show anything. Oh, no, it's cool. It does. Okay, so you can pretty much see what we see is what we're getting. Um, if I move this to the front a little bit, maybe let's see what happens then. So to get this view, this uh, render view up, go to this little eye icon up here on the clapperboard. Okay, so right, so this is okay, but we don't really get much detail in. Okay, and really what we want to do is to be able to um, get some pattern work on there and be able to actually see this object. So in order to do this, we actually have to create um, a UV map. Okay, so if I want to get some wood and some concrete on there, what I've I've, I've pre-prepared this, so I've basically scoured the um, internet for um, for some uh, texture files. Okay, and I've collated them into um, a wooden texture that you can kind of see here. So I'm loading up Photoshop. Um, just to kind of show you in there, um, but you'll see uh, here is the initial piece I put together. So I'll show you what I, what I've actually basically been looked for. So I found some wooden planks, and you'll see that I've lined those up. So going up and down here, I found those wooden planks. I found some wood ends. Okay, as you can see, I've found those wood pieces. Um, oh, wrong, clicked the wrong thing there, sorry. Um, so I found these wooden ends, and basically uh, they're going to go at the end of the object where that wooden beam end, where the wooden beams end, where they have any wood visible. And then here we have like a concrete texture that will go onto the bottom block. So the idea is that we're going to basically unpack the um, we're going to unpack and unwrap what's called unwrapping um, the let's blow that up. unwrap the um, object to be able to draw the faces on here and then they will show up in the viewport. Okay. 
so what we're going to do is we're going to start with this object so I'm going to go to the ring and the lamp and I'm literally just going to go to their visibility and I'm going to turn it to zero okay because we don't need to see them and they're just going to be in the way so the first thing I'm going to do is start with the main beam so I'm going to go in and I'm going to go into face mode and we're going to go to side view if it allows me to and we'll get this one here okay it's lagging a little bit now with all the programs and things that i've got going on uh, adding photoshop it didn't help what i'm going to do is go in i don't want to select these top faces that are if you imagine we're looking down i don't want to select those so i'm going to go across like this and select those and then we just need to think about the ones on this side so we're just going to go to panel perspective and i'm just going to go in and Holding shift, I'm going to add these to the selection one by one. Push Q to get rid of that tool. Select that loop. Select those two faces. <laughs> and you'll see we've not got anything selected at the top. And we've got a nice clean selection. So we're going to go to this window here called UV. And we're going to pop this out. And we're going to go to uh, the UV editor. It's going to open up another window. And we're going to go and set these to unwrap. So basically what you see in here, this is the original cube unpacked. If you imagine, like, I think you probably would have done this at primary school, you would have got a bit of paper, cut out the cube and folded it up and kind of put it together and then unrolled it again and it would look something like this. So when you start off in Maya, that's what you'll have. And as you add and edit the object, it kind of all just kind of becomes a mangled kind of mesh like this. And so we have to basically re-separate it. So with a simple object like this, and for the kind of things that I think you'll be creating, the two that you really, the three that you really need to know, automatic, cylindrical, and planar. Okay. Anything beyond that, we don't really need. And to be honest, um, I would, if it gets to that point, I will show you bonus tools. Okay. We don't have it installed on the college machines, but it's something that you can get at home for free. So for this, we're just going to click automatic. And you'll see that already all of that is really nicely unwrapped here to scale. And we can see all four posts, which is just lovely. That is exactly the sort of thing we want. And the white lines indicate where, the fact, where they've been cut up. So basically, each one of these posts is a separate uh, thing. So when we actually add in that wood texture, we can assign these really easily. And that's exactly what we want. So the next thing is to go to... I'm going to do this face here and what I'm actually going to do this time is I'm just going to go in double click and select all the loops probably not double click that one actually let's not do it that way <laughs> should have thought about that uh, what I'm going to do is just go to the front view and select like so just to make sure I haven't selected anything I didn't want to select okay and then holding shift I'm going to go through and select those side faces and then using a the double click, I'm going to go one, two, one, two. Remember to double click on that second click. And once we've got them all there, we're going to do the same thing, go to automatic, and you'll see it appears in here. Now, the only issue we have here is because it's made them fit into this, we need to get them to, to, to scale. So we're going to click assign checker shader. Okay. And I'm not sure it's going to work because we've already added a texture to it. So normally it would add some checkers in to be able for us to see um, what's basically loads of little squares so we can get them to kind of line up with there to, to be the same size. Um, but I know this is marginally shorter than that. And actually, we actually can do this with this here. We know that it needs to be that width. But this line at the top needs to be the width of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to push W. We're going to bring this over and we're going to line up line into the middle there so this, the two object sensors are lined up and then what we're going to do 
is just kind of scale it down and to something like there and we're then going to push the wheel and bring that back up and actually still a little bit more to go something like that so now it's roughly in scale okay, and that's important because we want the wood grain on here to reflect the same size on here okay so we'll bring that down there then what we've got to do is this wooden one in here which will be nice and easy just click and drag over there really easy and go to automatic again and this time oh we've assigned that checker map let's undo we don't want to select that sorry click go to automatic and now this time it's got a little bit more out um, and uh, position them and we're going to reposition these but for now what we're going to do is just move them out of the way um, right after we've resized them so we basically want the width of that to be roughly there so about half of what it currently is so if we take it down to something like that and if we take that there you'll see that kind of lines up so we're going to do that we're going to move that over there up here okay then what we've got is this small one here which again we're going to select those faces across not the ones on the end and we're going to click automatic again <laughs> and these need to be made a much much smaller and if we take those over here and we line that up and we scroll in you can kind of see that that is roughly where it needs to be so I'm happy with those so I'm going to put those down here and now we just need to do the ends so we're going to select q one two three four make sure you haven't selected anything behind it by accident and just click um automatic okay and we know that this object here is part of these and so needs to be the same width so let's go scale right down and zoom in so we can just get that being really in line with it and so basically to flip between the scale the move tool and the scale tool i'm pushing w and r i should have pointed that out sorry so basically those um tools work in here as well i totally forgot to mention that i do apologize so then select the next ones this is from the the next one up which is here so again you can see what they look like there but if we just go to automatic it will do the work for us automatic isn't always right and when you've got more complex organic forms it's a lot more complicated but as we're doing quite um hard surface objects especially in projects this should not really be an issue um using using the tool but if it is you can experiment with the others and if you have trouble beyond that come speak to me and we will work through them so we've now got that, that piece of there, so we'll just add that in. And now the next one finally for the wood is to get this one here. Again the automatic. And again we're going to resize it by pushing R to scale. W to move. And there we go, it's roughly right. So I'm happy with it. So next thing is the concrete block at the bottom. So I'm going to select all the faces going across again, like so, go automatic. And this time we know that they're about they need to come down about 50% because of the extra bit on the sides there. So if we kind of line that up a little bit shorter, so let's take it up a little bit. I'm kind of happy with that. So this is the concrete. So we're going to move the concrete right up here out of the way. And then we have the bottom faces. So we're going to select that loop. Just the four in the middle. Automatic. And then again, um, this needs to be the same width as these two here. So I'm just going to take that up. Make sure it kind of fits. 
I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah. Okay, and then across the top as well. Okay. And then I'll bring this up. And that just needs to be the same size as this one here. I'm going to scale that down. It doesn't have to be obviously perfectly matched, it's just a lot of effort. It doesn't necessarily need to be at this stage, at this level. So, uh, now we have that all set, what we need to do is get our texture here into the shader so it appears on the object. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the hypershade. So I'm going to click back on the eye, we'll pop it up. So what we're going to do is we are going to actually... Um, delete the concrete surface because we don't need that anymore and what we're going to do is assign the wooden surface to all of that so I'm going to select the whole object and we're just going to go assign material to selection okay now with this selected we're going to attach a um, image layer to it so what we're going to do is go to color Click on this checkered map down here and go to File. Now that texture reappears and we now have an image file going into the color. So this is that, this is this. If I click off it, it should change here. There you go, that, that is that. So we'll go back to File. And what I'm going to do is click on this little folder and I'm going to find that texture file. Uh, that I've put into the images folder and I'm just going to go into wood, the folder wood, you won't have these um, but you'll have this texture so wherever you've saved it just go and find it and I'm going to click open up okay so now what we'll have is um, a grey object but what we need to do is turn on hardware texturing so go to shading and click on hardware texturing okay now we have it but you'll see it's all kind of scrambled up Okay, so what we need to do is now reposition those UVs in the editor so that it makes sense on here. So what I'm going to do is select the object and we're going to basically reposition them. So first thing I'm going to do is go uh, push W, sorry, right click to face, push W, double click on this odd object. And all I'm going to do is bring this in and basically try and line it up best I can. They may need to be rescaled, okay? Don't be afraid to do, well, we, yeah, we don't want to rescale too much really. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put it on, we'll put them on, and then we'll kind of see what, what it looks like. We'll try that. If we find that it just isn't working, then we'll, we'll change it up. So I'm just going to reposition them so I find somewhere that kind of works. And we'll kind of just see what it looks like. So I think in the original example, I didn't have this kind of the crack in the middle showing. I think I've I'll reap it. I think I had skinnier wood on that model. So we'll we'll try. We'll see what this looks like. So basically, I've repositioned them, and now we can see that that beam in the middle, if I just uh, has now got that wood on there, and as you can see kind of looks palleted, which is, I suppose, is fine, and, I mean, it does the job for this demonstration in that it shows you what it looks like, and actually it kind of looks like we've got different bits of wood in there. So, um, what we're going to do next is, um, I'm going to change this one here, where it's like one plank, because um, it's going to look a bit weird at the top. I'll come back to that and I'll explain why. So, next one is this, these ones going across, so what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to go back into face and select those and I'm just going to bring these across and up to the top here and what we're going to try and do is line up each one of these until one we've okay in the middle of one of those seams like so do the same thing with this So the reason that I'm actually moving these around over the wood is I'm trying to not make the wood repeat across the um, design as much as possible. There will we will overlap some um, because there isn't enough.
space or separate bits of wood on here for it. You can anticipate this by adding more in uh, in Photoshop and kind of setting that up beforehand. Um, so yeah, so you can do it. It's possible. Um, so now we've done that one. We can kind of see that that's all in place. And I want to do is move those out of the way. I want to keep that there. Now what we've got to do is these ones going across. So um, with these, what we're going to do is push E to rotate them and just line them up as straight as we can. Bring them together. In fact, we'll just put them in one by one, and these are going to overlap down here. I'll try and avoid putting them over that face of the mirror. And in fact, actually, we can probably fit them in here quite nicely, I think. So, I'll try and avoid. Uh, especially ones at the side, we want to. Probably take the most care with because they're going to be the most visible and the one underneath. The one that's facing it towards this corner part is probably the of least concern because the chances of seeing that are going to be really minimal. So, now that smaller one's going to be the top because we can see the red light flash, flashing over here. So, and obviously that's selected there. And I'm just going to push those in. And then we'll move this one as well, just above it. Okay, nice. So we've got it in. So the next thing is to start thinking about these wood ends. So what we're going to do is, oh no, sorry, we've got this smaller one as well, this little bit up here. This should be fairly straightforward because of the size. What we're going to do is just put these into this section here. Put that down. And um, so now we've just got to think about these wooden end pieces. So because we're using those seams, what we're going to try and do is get them to basically cross across the top. So if I come down here, look, I think this is almost going to be a perfect fit almost. Um, we're just going to bring in that cross bit there. And what we're going to do is then just scale, we're going to scale this down just inside those. So what happens is we now look like we've got forward and beams kind of sitting at the top there. Okay, and we're just going to get the others and do exactly the same thing. Um, not so much this bottom one actually, that one can just be on one, but as these also um, cover, cover across four, we're going to try and get that planted on that seam really nicely. There we go. And then finally, we got this which you can just plant in there okay so if we just check this out first before we go back to the concrete so I'm just going to go back to object mode and you can see now that we have the wood kind of lining up okay and so we've got kind of four bits of wood although the lining's off a little bit would spend time tweaking that and kind of making it a bit more perfect but kind of if you look from this angle it looks like we've got four pieces of wood kind of being stuck together so, um, this end where we've got this one piece and you can see we've got two planks and then this one plank, two poles because of the back and the front, then we've got this one here, that's a problem. So, you know, if we, on, on production we'll go, we would go back and change that and all we've got to do to resolve it is basically move that one piece. So if we just go back into face, I believe it's this one here, no, this one here, sorry. So all, we, all I would do at this point is um, I'd move it along to this part um, and move the other, maybe move the smaller parts over there. But I'd probably rearrange the whole texture, generally speaking, um, to do that. So I'm just going to move that over like so. Okay, and as you can see in the display, you can see that line. I'm just trying to line up. Okay, and. We now have that done. 
Okay. So next thing is to now start thinking about the base. And um, to do that, we're going to go back into the hypershade, go back into face. And from here, we're literally just going to move these into the concrete. So concrete doesn't have any set grain or wood, it just has like a kind of gritted surface. Um, so for the sake of this today, I'm literally just going to slot these in because they're really bright. We probably won't see too much of it in the final render anyway. Um, and if we do, we can always come back and, and, and alter the UV map as required. Uh, so there is a bit of overlap here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that out. I'm just going to um, move that's fine. That one's coming out, so bring that in. Big ones are fine. So I am going to overlap these. I wouldn't recommend in practice you overlap these faces because you, you're left to untangle them again. Um, but for now, that's what we're going to do. So if I go back to object mode, we will see that we have that in. We've got a concrete surface on there as well. So the other thing is with Photoshop, um, we can actually make this more stylized. So if we don't want like a realistic texture, we can actually edit this image and make it more visually interesting. So what I did on here, for example, was um, I go, went to filter and filter gallery on the original image. And I added in a cutout effect, okay? Uh, but you can do anything on these. You could go into poster edges, you could do watercolor, um, sponge and make some interesting um, surfaces. So with this one, for example, um, when I saved it as a new image to change it, if I just go back into the hypershade and I'll click on my um, file, which I know is in here. Uh, sorry, let me just try and extend this box out. So you can see. So this one here, if I click on that, I've got a picture example two, which is that cutout effect. Click open. Okay, you will now see that we have that kind of cartoony kind of cutout effect over the top. Okay, and so you can do all sorts of things in Photoshop to change that image and then give it a bit more of a style and an aesthetic. Um, so, really, the filter gallery might be your way of actually really bringing out your project into a different kind of visual. Okay. So if you're going to filter gallery, as I said, there's loads of different bits there. So now we have um, this next stage done. The next two stages, which is the UV unwrap and the texturing, we get to move on to the next step. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.